Hello everyone, my name is Luis Ramirez and in this video I will show you how to use Mender.io to deliver secure and robust over-the-air updates for the NVIDIA Jetson devices. I strongly recommend going to MenderHub to get access to all the code and commands that we are going to use in this video. We need to visit the NVIDIA developer portal and download three particular files. The L4T driver package, the sample root file system, and the OTA tools provided by the NVIDIA. First of all, I am creating a new directory to use it as a workspace where I am moving all the files that we download in the previous step. After checking all the files are there, we are going to uncompress the Jetson Linux tarball. After the NVIDIA tools were uncompressed, we are going to proceed to uncompress the sample file system as well. If you have your own, you can use it instead of the one we just downloaded. Finally, we uncompress all the OTA tools as well. And we apply this script to our new file system. The next step is to flash the system into our device. Please don't forget, you need to have a jumper in the factory reset pins of your Jetson device. The rootfs AB equals 1 flag is the one in charge of telling the script to create the partitioning we need to ensure robustness in the OTA update process. This will take some time. As soon as it finishes, please reboot your device. Now you can start creating your golden image. For that you need to log in into device, accept the license, configure your user and customize the operating system as you need. After this process we are going to start installing Mender and configuring it. There are several installation methods. Just follow any of the ones described in this image. By design, Mender needs a partition for storage persistence. In this case, we are going to take advantage of the UDA partition NVIDIA provides and we are going to format it to EXT4. Then we are going to mount it using the FSTAP file as the root data partition. As you can see, the partition was mounted in the slash data directory. As this installation was not made taking into consideration our additional partition, we are going to move the files from the local partition to the slash data partition and create a symbolic link. Now we are going to create an update model. For that, we double check the route exists. After installing the Mender, it should be there. And then we just create the file. You can clone it from a Git repository or you can just copy the content described in the tutorial from the link I shared initially. In this tutorial I am copying from the link. This file will describe all the scripts that are going to be executed in all the states of the OTA update lifecycle. Don't forget to make it executable as these scripts are going to be triggered by the vendor client service. Now our golden image is ready, so we are going to proceed to create a snapshot of the current file system. We are defining the user and host IP where the file system is going to be copied. Now we are going to use the vendor snapshot utility that will freeze the file system and copy the entire file system into the host machine. Now we need to get back to the host machine, where we are going to create the base for the OTA process. This is described in official NVIDIA documentation. In this tutorial, we are not upgrading the version of the Jetson system, so we use exactly the same value for the target and base BSP. Then we just run the build based recovery image script. The next step is to take the file system we create with the Mender snapshot, uncompress it, then mount it 
and finally compress a new tarball that will be used to create the NVIDIA artifact. The full command can be found in the links that I shared initially. Then we run the official NVIDIA tool for creating the OTA package. It will use the tarball we just created alongside a script that it uses for updating. This script can be found in the OTA tarball downloaded from NVIDIA web page. Now we just double check that the image was generated successfully. As the NVIDIA part is ready, we are now going to create the Mendera artifact that we are going to use to deploy to the other devices on the fleet. For that we need to specify the values above and don't forget to rename the OTA tarball to be compliant with update module we defined in previous steps. After checking all the values are correct, now we proceed to generate the artifact itself. Now we are ready to upload the artifact we just create. We just need to click on upload, select it and then click on next. Then we need to wait for it to upload successfully. In the meantime, we are going to check the device is running on the first partition. Now we are going to create a file just to confirm that the update was successful. As soon as the artifact was successfully updated in to our server, we can just select the device to deploy it. With the default values, it should look like this. In this example, we are only using one device, but take into consideration you can deploy this artifact to multiple devices at once. As this process is long enough, I just captured some screenshots on how the process will look like. And if after rebooting the device everything is ok, it will mark it as successful. Now you can check the device again, and we'll notice we are booting from the second partition. Also, the file we created is not there anymore. Don't forget you can use MenderHub for any additional question. Thanks for watching.